Well, hello and welcome to The Right Venue and to The Apprentice, you're fired. Hope you've recovered from one of the most aggressive boardrooms that we ever had. Not only did Tara get fired, but Jamie and Panos, well, they had to go at each other, but more important than that, we're going to show you later on the way Jamie and Panos's day ends, and it's well worth staying around to see it. But here's how their day began. You have to be alert. I'm tired now because you're snoring all night. I'm tired now. Do you know how much you snore? Huh? I don't snore. You do, I could hear you last night. Please, Thanks like a train. Me. You're farting every day. <laughs> <laughs> every morning he wakes up, good morning. <laughs> I can't start, can you? Oh my god, this is disgusting. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> I love the fact that what Panos actually says while he's sniffing his own wrists is, oh, pack a raban. <laughs> To join us to look through tonight's show and to pick it apart is our celebrity panel, starting with the comedian Carl Spain. <laughs> journalist Roisin Ingle. And the person responsible for setting tonight's task from Appleby Jewelers, Eileen Gould. <laughs> We've now spent eight weeks in the company of our favourite property surveyor, but today Bill put up the for sale sign and he let her go. So at the end of the day, what I have to say is, Tara, you're young, you're inexperienced, you have a better life ahead of you from what you've learned here. But for tonight, you're fired. Thank you very much, Bill, and Jackie and Brian for the, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, folks, please welcome Tara Lee. <laughs> Hell of a welcome. I know. <laughs> Tara, we heard in that episode that you were on unpaid leave. Yes. Why did you decide to put yourself up for The Apprentice if you had a job? Um, because I always believe in challenging myself and to be perfectly honest I really did want to work for Bill and if I would have got the opportunity I would have given up my job you know but obviously it wasn't meant to be. I was slightly relieved to be fired to be honest so. But genuinely relieved? I mean is that you just now afterwards saying okay I'll, I'll say that no, I could No I was, I was so sick all day I just knew in my heart and soul that I was going home. I was, I was picking out my clothes to that morning and I was thinking what will I actually wear like you know to get fired I knew I knew I went to the Westbury and I thought oh gosh I'm going home you know I knew from a million percent confident to what do I wear to get fired he's going to get fired. No. and you try and put up this front you're like oh no like you know the team done brilliant but I just had this feeling from day one because day one was such a disaster you know that I knew you know that I was I was a goner when did you work out what a viral was? Um, when I actually got home after being fired. <laughs> um, I figured out what a viral was. I watched, um, I watched Thomas Cook had a viral. And then it kind of dawned on me. I was like, oh my God. If I, if, I was, if I understood the concept of a viral, that would have been great. Like the three of us well, went off on a rant for like the whole day, thinking that was a TV advert that had to be like funny. We just didn't get it. We didn't. But did Panos, because Panos kept saying, I explained it. But there's like explaining and there's like, he didn't say, you know, like we came up with concepts and he should have like turned it around and said, well, to make it into a viral, you turn around this way. Whereas he wasn't really saying that's not a viral, do you know, but he wasn't actually coming up with any ideas of, of a viral that he wanted to do, do you know. So it's kind of really left on, on Jamie and Will's head, to be honest, to come up with this concept and they didn't know what a viral was. So. Carl, is that Panos being cute and deciding I'll leave them to get home? No, well, I thought if you, if you saw the, the cuts between the two groups, 
your group just didn't seem happy. You were just like all arguing with each other. There was no, you weren't coming up with any kind of common thoughts. But the other group just seemed to be, yeah, we'll do that, and you seemed to be. But on is the that because they had a project manager who was picking or going home clothes at that point? Well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> no, no. I think to be honest, like Air Team, like and even looking back, and I think the guys would actually agree with me as well. Air Team wasn't the most creative. You know, Neve, Michelle, Barry, they are the most creative, and I think they had a more creative team. I think from the word go. I, even if Panis was team leader, I don't think we would have won the task. He, he would have known what he was supposed to be doing. Because he wasted he never, an awful lot of time. But at the same time, he would have known what we were meant to do. But like, he still didn't come up any, with any ideas. Mm -hmm. So I, I really don't see that how, if he was project manager, that we would have won it. Roshan, is that fair? Well, well, they, are they I less creative? I don't really know. Well, I, I think so maybe but less, I less uh, creative. But I just don't think you... And through a lot of the process, uh, listened a lot to people, mm -hmm. and I think that included Panos. I think it came across very clearly you didn't really like him very much, and so oh, even I, though he was the person well, with all the honest, knowledge, I totally disagree with just, that. I just okay. want to finish what I'm okay. saying. Uh, you didn't like him, I think, very much. You didn't respect him. You, you kept saying he was off cigarette breaks, and he was here there, and he, was, he wasn't really engaged with the process. Mm -hmm. and, but here you had someone who said. I know about, even if he is a bit funny and a bit mad, we're yeah. all laughing at him, but he, here was something that Panos actually knew about. And there, from the beginning, you were just saying, no, I don't want to listen to you. And I was thinking, actually, I'd quite know, like to know what a fire is. I think I sort of know, but I'd like to hear what Panos is saying. I don't well, think you gave him a to chance. Be honest, um, and like, I would have loved to hear, if, if you'd have given him a chance, he may be they would have come up with some concepts that you could have ran with instead of wasting okay. the whole day arguing back and forth. Well, from looking at the thing, I think I should have really listened to Panis, obviously, because he knew what he was talking about. But on the point that I didn't get on with Panis, like, whatever I said in the show was, it was purely performance-based. It was nothing to do with person, person, personally. Yeah. Because me and Panis are the best of friends now, and the same with, like, most people on the show. So who so didn't you get on with? Who's not in that category? Um, I don't think there was anyone, personally, that I never got on with. Any, as I said, anything that I ever did say was performance based and I'll always you know back up what I said and that's what I believed at you the time. You said an awful lot of negative things throughout the weeks you seem to be like starting your sentences with to be honest and going but picking you see it was people. hilarious because when we went home then and you know everyone was talking you know all these thoughts were in the air but no one would actually air them and I'm I've been brought up that I'm honest and I'm open and maybe that's one of my faults that I'm too honest and I should learn to shut my mouth. Was it was the loss on the viral Eileen or was it on the, the quality of the presentation? because Br Bill was pretty aggressive about the presentation. I mean, I think, realistically speaking, Anton, our uh, expectations about the production and the acting content, you know, was not going to be very high. I mean, there was no budget there to do it professionally, as we would do it. However, I think the overall uh, delivery of um, the launch, um, the content, the creativity, the innovation, and those types of criteria, that's what we were looking at. And that's what Applebee's ultimately judged on. And it was, uh, I have to say, um, the uh, launch on, uh, over the breakfast was, was um, the, the, the transformation between the two groups was outstanding. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let me bring in Mairead. Mairead Fleming from Brightwater, who is with us every week. Mairead, in your view, was it the launch that caused the loss of this task for Tara? Um, I think there was a number of items here that caused the loss for you today, Tara. Um, specifically, Bill said at the outset he wanted his PM to lead and to inspire. We didn't see any of those traits in you. You didn't listen to what Pana said, which I think Roisin has touched on earlier. You were like a headless chicken running around. There was no focus, there was no structure. I was kind of nervous looking at you and I just wanted you to hand it over to Panos and let him run with it. And as Roisin also said, I wanted to hear what Panos had to say. And we didn't get the opportunity to actually understand what the viral campaign was. I'm still struggling with it. So I think there was, a new, there was numerous things perhaps that you could have done so much better. Well, in your defence, Tara, was that because you were sketchy on what the viral was? Um, no, I think the, the whole, like, the failure to the task was day one. The three of us just didn't get the whole viral thing. We didn't listen to Panos. And then the, uh, the reception was just a disaster. I think it was a combination of things, really. Let's remind ourselves of uh, the combination. Here's oh, where... No. <laughs> <laughs> it may have all gone wrong for Tara. I think I'd be probably the better leader. I want this task. I'd go with Tara now for her structure and the way she gets things done. I thought this was a task for me, but I'll go with him. Yeah. I am like a million percent confident that I'm going to lead this team to victory. If you had the delivery guy of Applebee's or whatever, in 10 days, let's go, and he looks at his watch and here, and the actual guy is at the front door delivering the ring. I'm going to try to sound as less negative as possible, yeah. Yeah. but cool. it's a viral. It's a minute and a half, and usually yeah. virals, if they follow the storyline of a TV ad, they're going to be ignored. I'm a little bit worried. Like Will and Jamie, I don't think they had ever 
seen a viral before. And it was Everything when we you up. needed to know about virals was in that laptop. Yeah, absolutely. And you were looking at it, yeah. and you were checking it, and you were going into it. Absolutely. And, and then you we still couldn't understand it, and that man there was telling you all about it, and you still couldn't understand it. Can I get uh, four towels off you? We're going to wrap it up as if it's uh, like a newborn baby. Elevate's performance so far has been appalling. For some crazy reason, we took until 6 o'clock last night for them to realise they needed a complete change, and we have to do the whole task now in one day. Tara's not producing the goods on this one as a project manager. You're behind the idea, aren't you, Palace? I am. Yeah. I just hope I don't look like I on this task. <laughs> It's important that we get something there, not that not a light pod. Can we work with something else and get um, I, do, I don't know what they've done for the last day and a half. We were presented with an exciting challenge to um, to create a viral that promotes at the launch of Applebee's um, viral. The, sorry, that that promotes the, the launch of Applebee's new website. But that, that's down to me, Bill. I insisted on, on doing the presentation. It's my own doing, you know, at the end of the day. Well, like, all I can say is that in my three years of looking for an apprentice, it's been the worst I've ever seen. Tara, what happened to you in the presentation? I just crumbled from, as I said, from, from the time I woke up that morning. I seen, when we arrived in the Westbury, I seen the other's room and what they had planned. And that morning was just absolutely hectic. I realised I hadn't got enough money to pay the musicians. Yeah, what happened then, with that? Oh, God, it was just an absolute nightmare. Of course, we were outside Applebee's, and then we seen this lovely violinist, and I thought, oh, amazing, you know, we'll have him for, for our, um, our launch. And, of course, he was an illegal immigrant, and we couldn't hire him, of course. So, um, we but once you had the two of them standing there, how did you not have the cash to pay them? How did that Basically, happen? Basically, we had bought money, we had bought um, music for the viral, and we never took that into account. So when we arrived on the day, I had no idea, and then I realised, oh crap, I am like 42 euro 50 short. We we never really thought that we'd have to pay for music for the for the viral, and um, and then it just came to like that. Oh my God, we have two musicians down there. We've no money to pay them. What do we do? And Jamie thought look you know I'm sure they'll be grand slipping the 50 quid and we'll be grand but obviously Ooh. we couldn't you know so it was just because you got two of the most angry musicians in Ireland in yeah fairness. and in fairness they 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 like they were totally justified in what they yeah. were doing at the end of it they were in the West Green we couldn't mm -hmm. give them 50 euro for God's sake do you know what I mean so guys we, we do need to take a break at this stage but when we come back we have um Barry making a pitch to be a Hollywood director, and we have a no-nonsense clip of the week that just makes all the rest of them look like they're quotes from Shakespeare. Back in the show. And you're welcome back to The Right Venue and to The Apprentice, you're fired. Carl, the winning team clearly did a much better presentation. Did they do that much better a viral? The acting was quite poor in it, and like, the, picking old, the like an older was couple was a, bit, was a bit wrong. I mean, the, the actual concept itself seemed to be OK. Did then. you understand why the jewellery was put in the iron box on the winning one? That just, I, that baffled me. Well, it did it explain it when initially they were talking about a toaster, and that to give her a toaster is a joke, but then there's it's actually jewels in it. supposed to be that guy, you know, ha-ha, I, I didn't really get your toaster, I got you inside, but your woman... You know, shoved it on Did they look like any married couple you've ever seen? No, I thought no, it was, first of all, I thought it was a grandmother and a, so son, and a yeah. grandson, and then I was thought it was the mother Sharing and a bed son. together. <laughs> well, that was the bed was after. At the beginning, though, when he leaves for work, I thought that was his mother. That was actually my bed that they were lying in as well. They were reading my book as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Celia Hearn so, book. Yeah. I mean, yeah. When you began to see these concepts come out on tape, did, did you worry that they were going to do huge damage to Applebee's? <laughs> well, I think realistically we wouldn't have run with either of them, to be honest, Anton. Uh, I mean, I mean th but there was humour there, and there was creativity and I think they got marks for that I think they both lost the plot a little bit and went too risque but bear in mind a viral has to be infectious and you're hoping that it will um, you know get passed on so I mean I, I think that that was executed well on both their parts I think overall though it was amateurish so on the winning team who stood out for you who do you think from that performance I may think, go the for me it's Neve, Neve undoubtedly well. I, I have to say she well consistently I think she's been a grafter she's been um, you know good at fielding the questions I mean any time that she was asked any question uh, she is articulate um, I think she has it I think she can go all the way because we heard last week that part of her success is cozying up to the boys mm. but you think in just straight 
professional I think she's got the overall qualities to make it happen. And I think she has um, shown uh, a commitment to be better and keep focused and keep plodding along. And I think yeah. she's played a great game so far. And I think so she's she's a she seems to uh, go for people's strengths. You know, I mean, she put Barry in charge of the filming and he obviously thinks he's Steven Spielberg. So that was <laughs> grand. Um, and she listens to people. She really does. And she kind of takes it all on board, makes decisions. And is very focused and just sensible. Because I think a lot of things in The Apprentice, sometimes you're looking at people and you're shouting at the telly. But actually, with her, I haven't had those moments, and I think, again, she really stood out for me from the start. What about Steven Spielberg, Carl? <laughs> Your views on I, I thought he seemed to be reveling in it. I don't know, but there was kind of a weird joy in him, like, you know, when he was there. Thank God. You know, I think he's, he's gone off to try and find...